Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to this Smited discussion. Today, we're going to go into part three of this series I'm doing where I'm going to be talking about builds for all of the roles in Conquest. So, uh, again, this is going to be part three out of five. I've already talked about ADC builds and support builds, so we have the dual lane is covered. If you're interested in those two roles and what I have to say about that, you can check out those videos uh, on my channel. But today we're going to be focusing on mids and specifically we're going to be talking about mages. Of course, in the meta you can do physical mids like Chiron, Neath, and maybe like Uller. But I'm not going to be talking about those because those gods mainly you just want to do like the Transcendence build. So we're going to focus on mages instead. And the biggest thing I want to say before we get into it is that mid builds are the most confusing right now. That I've seen in a very, very long time. Uh, season 3 has had has seen many different variances of builds. We had Doom Orb at the beginning. Uh, then that kind of switched into more of the Dynasty Plate Helm build. And then it moved back into like Bancroft Talon, Lifesteal. Uh, then more recently it went into uh, Pythag's piece. And now once again we're kind of coming back into Dynasty Plate Helm. And a big mix. So so the biggest thing that I can say before we get into it is that mid builds are the most variant of any builds in the game. It's actually kind of refreshing because it means as if you're a mid player, you can really do whatever you feel like, um, of course, within reason. So there's not going to be one start that works. There's not going to be, even for every god, there's not going to be one thing that works. Um, usually in most roles, you can start a game a certain way and rely on that. But mids, it really will depend. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about each god and just items for them that are popular, that I've seen in, in pro play and in ranked, um, you know, different items that I've been seeing. And again, there's going to be a lot of different things that we go over. So uh, I'll try to give a brief and I'll try to talk about why each build works and why I think that it's, it's important to use certain items on certain gods. So we're going to start with Raijin. Um, I'm not going to go through every mage, but I'm going to go through, I guess, some of the main ones, just so you can get a feel for how some of the builds are. So, uh, b before the last couple weeks of the uh, SPL fall split, we saw some people start using tank boots because of the buffs to that. So, some mids are using tank boots. Now, those tank boots have been nerfed. I don't think mids will be using those anymore. So, we're going to go back into the shoes of the Magi. Um, you also saw a lot of mages go into Pythag's piece early. That gives you, uh, I think, up to 30% lifesteal. Um, and it's also just a good utility item. Gives your team some lifesteal as well. Um, but now, I think we're moving back into Doom Orb. So, uh, I'm seeing a lot of people who play Raijin Go into Doom Orb. I've also seen some people go into Dynasty Plate Helm with him. Go more of like a utility tanky build. Not trying to make their ultimate this high damaging ability. But more using it for uh, utility. Now with the nerfs to Raijin. They just nerfed his Thundercrash Raiju combo. I don't think he's going to be as popular as he was. He's still a very reliable mid. Um, but he's not going to be in every match at all. Um, but when he does get played. I think Doom Orb will be something that you want to pick up almost every time. If not, you want to go into Dynasty Plate Helm. Um, talking about starter items, so of course Soulstone and Vampiric Shroud are the two starter items for mages. Um, most mages right now are using Soulstone just because the power you get from it is really great once you get the five basic attack stacks. And that was this item was actually buffed a long time ago, like several months ago. So this is just a great setup, good for the early clear. Um, of course, Vampiric Shroud gives you a little bit more sustain so you can do that if you're if you'd like especially if you're playing a god that doesn't have an escape you might look into vampiric shroud but for a, a god like raijin who's very safe has a very good escape you can go soulstone and not really have to worry about it so going to soulstone uh doom orb is good good cheap item I actually will rush doom orb um a lot of builds right now will have boots go third item so you might go doom orb some other builds will go dynasty played helm second and then boots um, and then after that, you're, you'll notice that I have Spear of the Magus. Now, Spear of the Magus, there's a big difference between this item and Obsidian Shard. Obsidi Obsidian Shard um, does just give you more flat pen. This item is good for, um, like, channeled abilities. Anything that will do damage, like, over time. Or if you are if you have some t type of, of ability that you want to use as a setup in order for another ability. So I think like like Raijin uh, Upwash, even though he's not in the meta, he's a great Spear of the Magus um, character. 
you seen Poseidon because of his whirlpool again that just um it, it's really the length of time of that passive that you want to be able to, to deal as much damage as you can so this works well with Raijin's ultimate because again you have a, it's just like a channeled ability so that's why it works um and then of course other gods that are more um just burst heavy burst focused you will probably want to go into obsidian shards so that's most like Nuwa. um even like like Zeus, I guess you could probably go Obsidian Shard, and that that's it's really again it depends on what you want, um, for for that penetration slot. After that, Rod of Tahuti, Rod of Tahuti is going to be in almost every build. Uh, Soul Reaver is also going to be very popular, and then I just have Kronos Pendant at the end there as like another option. You could look into going Spirit Spirit of Desolation, uh, or something. Maybe you could even go like cool down earlier. Maybe Chronos Pendant earlier, and then go Rod of Tuity Soul Reaver. So that's that's pretty much a good overview of where Raiden's at. Um, this build again, it can actually apply to many gods, um, not just Raiden. So that's him. Uh, the next god I want to talk about is actually going to be Kakalkin. And the main reason I want to talk about him is obviously he has a, a certain type of build that he does best. But I want to talk about this Book of Thoth Warlock Sash combo, which can actually work on many gods. You can use this on like Kronos, um, Zeus, uh, Nuwa, you could probably use this combo as well. And the, the reason is you get the best of both worlds. So you're not going to be hitting super hard, of course. Kukulkin has to build Book of Thoth in almost every build because um, he gets that extra the magical power from that. So that's a very good item for him. But having these two stacking items in a row in the, the early to mid game allows him to get uh, not only have as much mana as he needs, but he's going to have more magical power and health as well. So you are getting, again, the, bo the best of both words, mana, health, and power and, and two items that you can stack. So that's, that's good. And of course, you want to use it on God that will get lots of stacks. So Kukulkin has great clear with his Whirlwind. That means he's going to get a lot of stacks very quickly, and that's why this build uh, works. After that, um, you could you can go right into Chronos Pendant and then you know make sure you get those Whirlwinds off quicker. Uh, another way that people can build Kukulkin, which I think works, is actually to rush, rush Chronos Pendant so that you can get those Whirlwinds even more because that really is like the best part of his kit. Um, and then, of course, Soul Reaver, Rob Tehuti, the last two items. So really, that that Book of Thoth Warlock Sash combo is another thing you can look at for certain gods, um, certain mages right now. Okay, so that's uh, that. Th th those are those two those two builds. Another build that uh, I do want to talk about. We'll go into Nuwa. So um, I actually need to change this. Um, so this will be just an, a, a normal start. Soul Stone into Boots One. And then you actually are going to rush Chronos Pendant after that. So you're going to be doing the Boots third uh, third item. You're going to leave the Boots 1 there. Don't finish them until you finish Chronos Pendant first. This will allow her to get her minions out even quicker very early game. Because early game clear is not very good. Getting those minions out earlier will be great. And then you can use your 3. Your 3 already has like I think a 9 second cooldown. So it's a very it's ability you can just spam. And so having the cooldown on the minions will allow you to use that that combo much more. Um, so that's the main thing I want to talk about with her. Another thing you could do with Nuwa, instead of Soul Stone, you could go Vampiric Shroud. Because again, she has no escape. And her early clear is very bad. So you have to be extremely careful with her. Getting Vampiric Shroud will again give her more sustain. Um, after that, I think Book of Thoth is very important. Especially if you're going to have Chronos Pendant online already which means you're going to have more abilities being used, which means you're going to use mana a lot quicker. Having Book of Thoth is great. This is actually a very good item in the meta. So think about picking that up on Nuwa. And then after that, kind of going into the normal build. Obsidian Shard, you definitely want to get that on Nuwa. She does not benefit from Spear of the Magus whatsoever. Um, she's all her very quick burst abilities, so it doesn't make sense. Um, and then Rod Tehuti, Soul Reaver. That's good. And then by the end of the game, your ultimate's going to chunk with this build. Um, so that's Nuwa, and then there's another one that I would like to talk about. I might actually go into some healing builds. I'm not, again, I'm not really a great, uh, healer player. I don't know the builds that well, but I can try to do that after this. Um, so this is actually not what I want. Um, what I'm going to do is put Tiny Trinket in this slot. So uh, this is another build, and we're looking at Vulcan right now. This is a, a build that you have been seeing on on a lot of 
of gods a little bit uh, farther back in time. Um, again, when, when Bancroft Talon got buffed, people were using that item a lot. People will still use it, but it's not really in the meta as much anymore. And then after Bancroft Talon, people wanted to use Pythax piece to get that extra lifesteal. What you are seeing a lot of people do, um, again, in, in ranked SPL, is what they'll do is they'll go Soulstone, Tiny Trinket, and then they'll just leave that Tiny Trinket there for like the entirety of the build and then maybe they'll finish it like their last item and the reason is because you already get four percent lifesteal now that might not seem like an, um, that much um but if, well, throughout the course of the early game you're still getting a little bit of health back that's a little bit of sustain that you can use and so it's it's not like the best lifesteal ever as i said but it's still good enough that you can carry it along that throughout the game and then still build as much power as you need and finish that tiny trinket later. It's just a good way to have early life steal. Um, it's almost like a replacement for a vampiric shroud. Um, so you get you get the extra damage on soul stone, but then you also get a little sustain from this item. So that's why you, you're seeing a lot of people do that. And then you might wait to finish Pythag's piece, or you could go into like Polynomicon later in the build, whenever. Um, so that's really the biggest thing I want to talk about. Vulcan, um, Vulcan. I think you you could absolutely get rid of. Um, you know, Book of Thoth and, and maybe look towards just full power because it does have that passive where it gets the extra MP5. Just know that you're going to probably be getting potions a lot more throughout the game and your man is going to be an issue if you don't build it, but you will get so much more power and then late game your ultimate is going to just one-shot people. So uh, let's say you want to get Sphere of Desolation on him. You could skip Book of Thoth, be careful of your mana usage, and then get this item instead. Um, so as you can see, there's a lot of builds going on here. Um, those are really the main ones that I wanted to talk about. Uh, of course, you know, those are the ones that are in the meta. Actually, there's one more I'll, I'll go, I'll talk about, um, before we move on. Uh, so this is Janus. Now, Dynasty Plate Helm, I already talked about, uh, Dynasty Plate Helm is kind of having a, a resurgence. It was very popular for a long time. I wouldn't say that people ever stopped using it, but other builds just started getting used at, like, the beginning of the fall split. And now it's it's kind of being more of a safe uh, a safe item, a good physical defense. And uh, especially with junglers doing so well, you know, there's so many junglers that are getting banned in, in, in the SPL. So you have to really be careful of that as, as a mid laner. So having that protection is great. It's also a very cheap item, um, which is huge. And actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to get rid of this. And we're going to put that item there. So this is actually another start. Instead of going to the boots, you rush Dynasty Plate Helm, finish that. Uh, well, actually what you can do is get Soul Stone, get the Imperial Helm, which is the tier one of it, then go into your boots finish those and then finish your dynasty plate helm um so you're seeing a lot of these like starter um you know tier one items they're they're getting picked up and then they're just kind of like hanging around a little bit as you finish some of your other like necessary items and then you can finish off the item um so that's that's what a lot of people are doing with with janice i've seen it on zeus i've seen people with Nuwa do this as well um so that's very helpful good protections um in the early game now, something interesting that I've been seeing uh, a lot more now recently is I've been seeing this kind of strange four-item start on Janus, uh, with the last item being Soul Reaver. I don't know why. I feel like that item is really expensive, and right when you're getting into the mid lane, uh, the mid game, you kind of want to have, you know, your items online, and you might be waiting a long time before you get enough gold for Soul Reaver. So this kind of confuses me. But I think the reason is because, you know, obviously Soul, if you have Soul Reaver with your 2 ability on Janus, by the time you get it online, your 2 is going to be doing a lot of damage. So it's really kind of focusing on your 2 damage um, while also keeping in mind that you're going to be spending a lot of time trying to finish off this item. So I think that's a little risky but that's what I've been seeing. And then sometimes what I'll see is I'll see Book of Thoth, like fifth item, which I think is very late for that item. Um, it takes 75 stacks to get it fully stacked. So that can take a long time. And if you're not building this like third, fourth, then you might be in trouble. Uh, and then after that, Obsidian Shard, Raw of Tehuti, kind of normal stuff near the end of the build. Um, so I guess as a rule of thumb in general, just note that 
mid builds usually ends the same way with Ra of Tehudin, like Soul Reaver, maybe Spear of Desolation, uh, Obsidian Shard, Spear of the Magus. These are all items that you're going to see at the end of almost every mage build because you, that's those are the items that will just give you that late game punch, and that's nothing new. Um, so so that's something to note as well. So after that, we'll go into we'll go into Chunga. I think I have a build for her. Um, so this is my build for Chunga. Uh, I'm again, I'm not really a, a healing player, but uh, I think this is this is a very strong build. Maybe I might change Rod of Asclepius to be an earlier item. Um, cause this really is a great item for her healing. This is something that you might want to the mid, in the mid game. So, uh, maybe instead of Chronos Pendant, go Rod of Asclepius, then you could go Obsidian Shard, and then maybe Chronos Pendant later in the build. Um, I don't know if cooldown is actually that important on Chunga. Uh, I feel like her cooldowns are low enough that you don't really need it. I think I probably have Chronos Pendant here just to make her, just to spam her heals even more. Um, but I would actually switch those items. So, Book of Thoth is great. Just to get that mana. Of course, she has the two, which can allow her to re get some more mana regen. But is it's not really a reliable reliable ability. You might get some mana from that every now and then. Um, so having Book of Thoth is great, especially since again she has the low cooldowns. You're gonna be spamming those abilities quite a bit. Um, so that's good. I think that's a great item to have. And then just building some some pure power near the the late game um, is good. I think you could also build. Lotus Crown. Lotus Crown would be great on, on a Chunga. Um, so yeah, so that that's something to keep in mind for healers. Uh, I think Rod of Sclepius is obviously the key here. That's something that you want on most of your uh, your healers. On Aphrodite, you definitely want to pick up that item. Uh, and on Hell as well. So um, so that's pretty much it. And of course, after watching, if you've made it to this part of the video, you notice that there was a lot to talk about. Um, so mid mid builds again just are, there's a wide variety uh, of things going on right now once the lands start going um you might see some more specific builds i do think dynasty plate helm is kind of re-emerging in the meta um but again that book of thoth warlock sash combo has been big for a while and of course uh pythax piece is also in there as well so there's just so many different things you can do so in my opinion i think that makes mages kind of the most exciting role right now because it's really just whatever you think works the best that's what you should build um there's a lot of variances um and if you compare that to like a hunter the adc role that those builds are probably the most boring uh in smite right now i guess warriors assassins are not super exciting either but adcs really just do like the same thing all the time there's not much variance there um mid a lot of variance um so if you're a mid player i would love to hear what you're building let me know um but, uh, and then again, this is part three of a, of a five-part series. We have junglers and warriors next to talk about, so I will go over that um, in some upcoming videos. So I thank you very much for watching, and hope you have a great day.